Welcome back to Shannon's Club TV, the program for Shannon's Club members and all motoring enthusiasts to indulge the passion we all share for cars and motorcycles. In each episode of Shannon's Club TV, we delve into the road and race histories of our feature car and meet a proud enthusiast. You'll also find the latest updates from Shannon's auction team with tips on trends and what to look out for. Right now though, let's take a look at the car that literally saved the rotary engine, the Mazda RX-3. The Mazda RX-3 and its global sales success were the first real indicators that the Japanese had succeeded where the rest of the world had failed. Mazda had good reason for taking on the Wankel rotary engine, then sticking with it. It was the first time that a fledgling Japanese company like Mazda could stand as an equal on the same start line in a race to perfect a brand new engine technology. General Motors, Ford, American Motors, Rolls-Royce, Mercedes-Benz, Porsche and Citroen all took out licenses to develop their own rotary engines. In the early 1960s, the rotary was the silver bullet of the engine bay. It slashed weight by almost 40% over an equivalent piston engine. It reduced the number of moving parts dramatically and it was no bigger than the gearbox behind it. It was also inherently smooth and powerful. The Rotary was the perfect fit with Japanese culture that discarded or miniaturised anything that took up too much space. No surprise then that Mazda went in harder and further than any other manufacturer to make it work. Mark, was the Rotary a natural for motor racing or was it a case of Mazda having to race its new engine to convince buyers to take it seriously? You know, I can't think of a better example of a car manufacturer using motorsport to change public perceptions. You know, they were in a lot of trouble after that disastrous NSU Wankel program. There was real doubts about the reliability of this engine. So for Mazda to get out and start racing and convincing people that the reliability and speed they saw on the racetrack was exactly the same that they could get in the showroom, it was just the tonic. And the RX3 was the right car at the right time to digest that. Well, you're right, Mark, this is exactly what happened. Mazda's first rotaries were trialled in the sleek Cosmo sports car and the larger R130 hardtop. Both were kept close to home as Mazda battled with short engine life, heavy fuel consumption and dirty exhaust. The poor torque at low engine speeds was also a huge setback. The Mazda Savannah RX3 was different. In 1972, it defined a sweet spot in size, weight and price that suited the rotary. Almost line bore with the 808's 1300 piston engine in weight and size, the RX3's rotary bumped output up from 44 kilowatts and 90 newton metres to 71 kilowatts and 138 newton metres. The performance increase was dramatic. Then in 1974, Mazda took a body blow as new emission laws exposed the rotary's fatal flaw. The RX3 gained an onboard incineration system more complex than the engine itself to burn off the rotary's emissions. Even if a bigger rotary compensated, the RX3 had lost its simplicity and fuel consumption was now an issue. Larger rotary models were short-lived. New computer technology then gave the rotary a reprieve as an exclusive sports car engine, except emissions caught up with it again. Mazda finally had to drop it in 2012. Mark, in hindsight, those wild days of racing a Mazda RX-3 with the first really different engine in the entire mm. history of the internal combustion engine, it was unprecedented. It sure was, and it was that amazing noise that it made that really highlighted just how different it was. Still to come, we'll take a look at a beautifully preserved Mazda RX-3 and meet its proud owner. Plus, we get the latest updates from Shannon's auction team with Hammer Time. Prior to the appearance of Mazda's R100 Coupe at the 1969 Bathurst 500, no one had heard the bizarre exhaust note of a rotary-powered Mazda on Mount Panorama. With the standard road-legal exhaust systems required at the time, the Japanese cars emitted a strange muffled noise that was similar to that made when tearing a large sheet of paper. The change from series production to production touring rules in 1973 allowed for various modifications, including to the exhaust systems, which meant you could run big open pipes with no mufflers. The audible change was most noticeable in the then latest model Mazda RX-3, which produced a frenzied, high-pitched buzz that sounded more like a swarm of angry bees. 
The shrill, ear-splitting noise from these open-pipe Japanese cars had many fans, including me, reaching for their earplugs, and the nicknames Buzz Bomb and Rice Burner soon struck a chord in the grandstands. Despite this good-natured ribbing, Aussie race fans came to respect the RX3 for no other reason than its ability to get the job done in convincing style. Joe, the reliability shown by the RX3 on the racetrack, you know, that was mighty impressive stuff, but did that translate to ownership as a road car being used, you know, like in the day-to-day -day grind? Well, the rotary engine was actually quite well accepted mm. in the margins by Australians, but it was still seen as an oddity, and Australians are notorious early adopters, mm. and that's where the rotary went first. The RX3 came out, that all changed. Yeah, all that, of was, a sudden, that changed it, didn't it? You, yeah. you actually could look at an RX3 up against a mainstream competitor. It, it wasn't the rotary anymore that mm. was the sole focus. It was the fact that it was a really good car. Yeah. And that was a big change. Yeah, it was a game changer for the rotary, wasn't it? The first RX3, with its tiny 10A rotary engine, was thrust into battle in the 1973 Manufacturers' Championship, but it could not match the raw speed of Alfa Romeo's 2000 GTV. The RX3 was destined to reach much greater heights with the arrival in early 1974 of the Series 2 model, powered by the larger and more powerful 12A rotary, which pushed it up into the 3-litre class. Mazda dealer Len Bainbridge backed the talented Tony Farrell for a serious crack at the 1974 Man Champs, and the results were astounding. Their 12A RX3 took a clean sweep of all five 3-litre class wins often finishing higher in the outright results than more powerful Ford and Holden V8 opposition. The RX3 certainly met its match in 1975 in the 3 litre class with Ford's resurgent V6 Capri, but the Japanese rocket continued to justify its giant killer reputation, particularly at Bathurst, where Don Holland and Japanese co-driver Hiroshi Fushida won the 3 litre class and finished an astonishing fifth outright, beaten only by a quartet of Tirana V8s. The RX3 remained a competitive force in local touring car racing until the early 1980s, when the RX7 took over. After almost a decade of competition at the highest level, the RX3 had done its job for Mazda by delivering a trophy cabinet bursting with victories, which proved beyond doubt the speed and reliability of the corporation's rotary engine. If you're motoring enthusiasts like us, why not join the Shannons Club? Upload photos of your favourite cars, connect with other members and have access to exclusive club offers. You can read the full road and race histories of our feature cars and catch up on past episodes of Shannon's Club TV on the club website. Uh, 1973 Mazda RX3 10A. 10A meaning the capacity of the motor um, the special features on this car as such, being a Series 1, was the headlight and grille. They were aluminium, the Series 2 was plastic, so these were sort of the early version, got the candy apple, the, the nicer taillights. Also the badges, the RX3 badges have got what they call resin in them, so they're not painted, they're actually a pretty type of plasticky resin. So again, just little features like that set this car off. This is my first car, I've actually bought this way back late. 80s, maybe possibly early 90s, so I've had this car for a very long time. Previous owner was a lady, an elderly lady who owned it, so I think it's basically her and me are the only owners of this vehicle. How I first got into this car was basically a brother's friend had one of these cars and another one of his friends also had a big V8 and to my amazement I couldn't believe that this little car was actually faster than the V8, so that's what sort of attracted me to that, the performance side of the car. They're a really smooth car in the way that they rev and perform compared to a piston motor. Um, they're just a, a really smooth and nice drive. This is basically how they came out from factory in that uh, original coils, the distributors, even the original oil filter from back in the day which I've managed to purchase from overseas. So all these little things are hard to get. Even the um, the hoses, they're originally when they first came out, they were braided. Years later went on, they um, deleted that from the profile of the car. So to get these hoses is quite hard. I've had to search pretty much worldwide. All the little things that make it unique, such as the uh, cap on the radiator, it's got a little chain if you can see that. Basically how you see the car is how it came out 
back in the day. So these cars are starting to become quite a cult following and a lot of guys are now restoring back to original because they're just hard to get like this. Shannon's National Auction Manager, Chris Borovan, joins us. Hi, Chris. Hey, guys. How are you? Welcome to the show. The uh, Mazda RX-3. Do we see many of these coming through the auction houses these days? Look, I think we're seeing more now coming through. Mm. Uh, the early uh, rotaries, uh, there's a, a, definitely a, a renewed following for them. We went through a period where we saw them heavily modified, raced to death almost. Yep. So the market shifted a bit, hasn't it? Is it the genuine original cars that are now creating the most attention? What's it? They are. It's, it's so scarce these days to find an original RX-3, whether it's a coupe or something. That is a rare car, isn't uh, it? Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, we, we lost a lot of good cars mm. to Japan back in the 90s when the Japanese realised that they'd actually, you know, got rid of all their good RX-3s, so they came shopping here in Australia, and I think so, so we did lose some good cars. So there's a real rarity factor here, and mm. so we've got sedan and coupe. Is that affected as well? Yeah, look, I think so. I mean, the coupes have uh, predominantly been brings probably 20% more in value than the sedans. Yes. Mm. Uh, but look, some people prefer the sedans over the coupe, so mm. it's a personal choice. We yeah. talk about the, uh, the four-door and the coupe. The coupe was, of course, the most successful car on the racetrack when the RX3 was racing. Do you yeah. see any, any former competition cars come up for sale? Yeah. We have had a former competition car come up. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, they're very rare. And, uh, and today, look, it's, it's a great, great car for the Group C racing. You know, I'd, I'd love to be in mine myself. It would be a good thing to have because they're very reliable and I imagine yeah. you know, it would be you know, relatively cheap to run. What advice would you give to someone who wants to buy an RX-3? Look, the advice is uh, very simple. Uh, if you see the right car, jump on it quickly because it doesn't last very long. They get uh, snapped up, don't they? Snapped up very yeah. quickly. So it really means you've got to do your homework first so that you're ready to mm. buy one when you see one. Absolutely. You look, do your homework, make sure you know what you're, you're getting yourself into, what you're buying. But when you find that car, whether it's in a classifieds or online, Jump on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks for joining us, Chris. Remember, you can keep up to date with all the latest auction news on the Shannon's Club website. If you'd like a memorable image of the Mazda RX-3 in competition, why not visit autopix.com.au, Australia's most comprehensive motorsport photo archive. Well, Joe, I guess, you know, in wrapping up the legacy of the, the Mazda RX-3, I think it comes back to our, our opening comment it really was the car that saved the rotary engine. Well, up until that point, uh, and for some time after, we mm. saw those exotic Mercedes uh, sports cars with mm. the mid-engine rotaries. We'd seen Citroen put one out there, NSU, that magnificent RO80. <laughs> Yet they're all theory. They, mm. they didn't quite work for, for the average population. That RX3, it was there for everyone and no more so than in this country. And the racetrack success made that even more immediate. Mm. It's such an amazing era that we'll never see again, I don't think. Yeah, it really was a, a hugely significant car in automotive history. Well, yes, it was. Yeah. Mm. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this rowdy chapter of the show <laughs> with the RX-3, and we'll catch you next time on Shannon's Club TV.